Hello guys, me again. No, you're not going mad. Don't turn off your computer. It's still the same Axel, still the same me, still the same trusses. Um, if you watch part, part four, you'll know that I had a lot of trouble with the welding. Lots and lots of porosity. Um, um, it, the, as I said, when you welded it, you kind of, as the weld cooled, it sort of erupted like a volcano. So, um, yeah, started grinding the tacks away and noticed they started to ping. Um, they were very, very brittle and they were very, they were like an error, very, very porous. So I decided to basically um, cut all the tacks away, get rid of everything and start again. Um, and I realised the, the biggest problem was the edges of the, the parts. If you look at this one here, this part hasn't been touched and this is the, this is the edge as it comes, the, the, the laser cut edge. Now whether there's a slight recast layer on there, I don't know. Normally when you, when you laser cut, um, you do end up with a, uh, a recast there, which you, you would sandblast off, but these obviously aren't sandblasted. You've also got this thick black coating. Um, you can, if you look at this, it's kind of, it doesn't seem greasy, okay? Until you look at this, <laughs> look at the difference in color of those two. Okay, so this one's been cleaned with brake feeder, that one hasn't. So that's the coating I'm talking about, and that's what I think has been giving me the the issue with the contamination in the wells. So basically I decided to start again. So basically I've, I've cut it off, ground up all the edges. So we've got clean metal now, removed all that grease and everything. So uh, we're all good to go. I've also on this one, there was a slot. You can see on the back, there was a slot in there. Um, didn't see the point in it. So I welded that up and, and cleaned it all back up. And also um, thanks Diesel Jim on the Defender2.net forums. If you're not on there, go and have a look. So, Really, really good forum for um, defenders, uh, particularly the, t the TDCI section is really, really good for Puma owners. And um, he said those big holes in the top, they're just going to let mud in. But that's a really good point. Um, you know, you get stones in there that would be too big to come out of any of these drain holes on the sides. So basically, if you had, say, a half inch square stone, you'd end up filling this up with stones and you wouldn't be able to get them out because there's no way of getting them out. So very good point. Thank you for that. So what I did, you can see I've drilled drilled and tapped two M6 holes, made up a cover for some, uh, I think it's three mil plate or two mil plate. And then with just with a couple of M6 bolts, we can, um, as you can see, we can bolt that on. So we've got a, a bolt on cover now, so we can still get to our breather tube, should we need to, shouldn't need to, but we may do. Um, and basically we can stop all the stuff going in there. So basically you're going to get water and slurry getting in through these, these little um, drains in the side, but it's only going to be water or tiny bits of mud and you get a pressure hose in there and blast it all out. So, and also you can take this cover off and blast down through there. So it's, you know, it's a well raised point. Thank you, Diesel Jim. Another point that's been raised is I could have bought the excess four by four axle truss. It's made of a different type of steel. It's lighter than this um, than this steel, so it can be thinner because it's stronger. So it's it's lighter again. So it's much much lighter. It's also got some massive cutouts in it. Go and have a look on their website, XS Four by Four, and you'll see on there they're they're massively cut away. But I can't find any pictures of a rear axle, um, and they only do the top. Now, they actually say in their description that. Depends how you read it, but it looks like they kind of say that the top bends, the bottom doesn't. Well, I can't see how that can be possible. But they also say that the it's only the long that bends, not the short. Um, I kind of go with the army really, and if you look at the the Wolf Land Rovers, they they're boxed in on both sides. So obviously they discovered they needed strengthening on both sides. So I'm going to go with that. Having said that, I think the XS four x four kit, similar in price to this, I think maybe slightly more expensive. Um, there's not as much to it. You don't get anything for the undersides. It's all on the top of the axle. If you look at the Americans, they just do the top of the axle generally, but they put a huge truss all the way over the top. So you're making a huge box section. They're not just adding material from here to here. So, um, you know, we, uh, excuse the ice cream man, he comes around about five times a day. He'd be around again in five minutes. Um, so yeah, basically, um, so that's that. So. You know, if you want to go for lighter, more holes and everything, and something that maybe looks a bit more technical, go for the excess. If you want something that's just sort of down to earth and, and basic, go for this one. But 
be prepared to do a lot of work to fit it. The XS is going to fit better than this one for sure because there's less of it. <laughs> Let's get on now. I'm going to get this tacked up now and I'll get back to where we were at the end of part four and then we'll pick up from there. And there we go guys. Really sorry I said I was going to show you it when it's all tacked and everything but then I was thinking well how on earth can I make an interesting video about welding this together. But basically as you saw in my last video if you haven't seen that one go back Basically attack here, attack here, here, here and dot around and move around and you, you won't get too much distortion and as I say you need to, if you're going to fit these, go back and look at how I've cut them around and made them fit because with the massive gaps they come standard you will get problems with uh, pulling. So basically what I've done, um, this is not an instruction, I'm not a professional by any stretch of the imagination, but this is how I've done it. I've tacked it here, 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 here here, 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 and here on both sides. Left this area here till last, and down the back there. Left this area, and on the bottom. Left that completely alone. Don't, don't weld that up because that's where you're going to get your pulling. And then what I did, once all that's done on both sides, I've done like a weld along here, then I've done a weld along here, then I've turned it over, I've done on the opposite side a weld along here, one along here, perhaps a bit down here. Then come up to the other side, then a bit here, a bit here, a bit here, a bit there. And then that's what I've done, it's just moving around from side to side, from top to bottom. And I've got these bars on here, you can see, if I come back here and show you the overall, you can see those two bars. Where's my finger? You can see the bars, here they are. One there, and then there's one over there. And basically I measure across from there to there, and from there to there. And just keep measuring you can also put the bars vertical so you can check the axle for pulling up and down the way it is now it's checking for for tow um, and if you do start to see a pull then do a longer weld on the side that's uh, widest and it will help to pull it back in and just if you keep moving around you will get it okay the biggest problem is is getting a nice tidy looking weld because as you can see here we've got stops and starts everywhere which um which don't look very pretty so um I mean, they're okay. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to go around with a grinder and just dress this and just sort of blend the edges in. Some people like to use body filler on their welds just to make them look better, which is absolutely fine. Um, I'm not going to do that on this because it's a Land Rover. It's not supposed to look pretty. It's, although I'm a tart and I like things to look nice. Yeah, I'm just going to sort of blend it out and make it look a bit nicer so under, under a coat of paint it looks better. Another thing you can do, which I've done in the past, give it a good thick coat of primer let it go off for an hour and then come over the rag with some damper thinners and just wipe it over and it'll take the, 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 the primer from the high spots and leave it in the low spots and then you can prime it all properly. It's basically you making like a high build primer in the, in the well so you just basically smooth it out. Um, so of course then once I've done all this, did the ends, went around the ends on both the top and the bottom. I was careful around this tube not to cause any distortion because I can't get a drill in there to drill it out. So. That's all worked out well. I've tried a tube in there and it's absolutely fine. The um, 6 nil tube from the Gwyn Lewis wading kit. Then there's the plate on top that I did. Thanks, Diesel Jim from Defender2.net. Suggested I made a plate to cover up these. There's a great big hole under there. I'll show you. Also, you can see the great big hole in there and that's where we get to the... If you can just see down in there, there's not very much light. Just down in there, we've got the hole that I drilled and tapped. M12 by 1.5, not 1.75 for the Gwyn Lewis brass elbow for the wading kit. Um, then once all that was done, let it all cool down. And then I've obviously bolted the diff. Well, I've had the diff bolted on for most of it. And, um, and welded down here, whoops, down here and down here. Um, you'll make sure you get a nice, good penetration in there. Um, I want this to be absolutely solid and make sure this, this face here doesn't pull around and stuff. But it's absolutely fine, it's absolutely flat. It's a silicon joint anyway, so if it does pull it a bit, it's not going to hurt. Um, and then same down the other side. I'll just take you around to the front so you can see what it looks like. You can see here, I've done the same on this side with all the welding around here. And then down here we've got the weld. If I can get some better light, there we go. Get the weld parallel to the to the Gwyn Lewis diff pan. So that's all looking good. And then finally, up over the top here and under the bottom. And as I say, once I've come over and just just lightly taking the edge off of here, those welds will look lovely. So there we go. So let me do some um, clean up around these welds and then I'll come back. And so there we go guys. 
job done. All the welds all polished up. All basically I do is go over there with a, um, a disc on the end of a drill and just basically, just if you run your fingers over there, it should be nice and smooth. There should be nothing on there that would cut you or rip a piece of cotton or whatever. You just want it to be nice and smooth because when you've got hard edges, not only do they look very nice, not, not look very nice, but the other problem is when you paint, the paint will always pull away from the corners and you'll always have a thin area of paint there and it's extremely easy to chip. So if you keep everything nice and smooth and radius, then the, the paint will um, will stick around a radius a lot easier than it will on, onto a sharp edge. So uh, there we go. So that's the front axle done. Um, I think this has been quite a short video, hasn't it? Uh, oh, the other thing I wanted to show you is on my, I did get my um, Ranger Raptor. I'll put a picture up now of the rear axle on that. And you can see that's actually trussed on the lower half. And if you spread your eyes across the picture to the extreme left and right, you'll see those beautiful Fox shocks on there. Oof, they're really nice. They're really nice. I mean, the car is a dream to drive. It's like, was that a speed bump just now? Lovely, lovely. I know you Land Rover guys probably think it's a piece of junk, but, um, you know, that's Land Rover guys. I don't, I, I don't sort of think that way. But um, anyway, um, I do agree with one thing though, electronics are becoming a bit daft, everything now is, uh, is, is too much, too much of it and um, the new Defender I think, uh, you know, with Land Rover's reliability record, poor build quality record, um, certainly in the case of my Land Rover it's, it's Friday afternoon job, it's a joke, um, but you know, I, I think those vehicles once they're three years old and the warranties run out, I don't know, that was why I bought the Ranger Raptor instead. Um, I think the Ranger, is, it's got a, a bit of a reputation for some recalls and stuff, but then most vehicles these days do. But I don't think they, they drop like a stone as soon as the uh, the warranty's out. And I certainly look after my vehicles anyway, so um, anyway, you only live once. That's, it's, I just, I've always wanted a great big pickup truck, now I've got one, so I'm happy. So there we are. Um, that's it for the front axle, as I say. This has been riding on the well, this video has been welding on the terra firma um, front axle supports for the uh, for the 90 or the 110 it's the same it's for the rover axle uh, rear end um, on, on this 90 is a rover axle as well so we'll cover that in the next part we'll look at cleaning up and tacking up and probably go right through the whole thing really in one video so um i'll see you soon for that one bye for now guys